Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from dwbiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today we will learn how to implement one of the dimensional modeling scenarios. Today the topic is to implement a slowly changing dimension of type 1 using SAP data services as our, as our ETL tool. In this particular example we will consider a product dimension to be of type SCD1. Next we will also consider a full extraction of the load. So you may consider that the source table is uh, the size is manageable enough to do a full extraction on a daily basis. Also, you can consider a case where the source sy system sends a file format and we need to read that file, full file on a daily basis to perform the extraction and then continue with our slowly changing dimension type 1 implementation. So, let us go into the job design in SAP data services. In this job design, you can see a try catch block within which there is an initialization script followed by the business uh, data flow that is the data flow to implement a slowly changing dimension of type 1 and finally, we have a final script. So, let us check the initialization script. When we go inside this initialization script, we have used a global variable called dollar $sysdate. So, in the global variable, we have defined a dollar $sysdate global variable with data type date. And we have initialized it with the sysdate function available in data services to indicate this, uh, system date. This date will be used to identify the load date of the dimensional record. So, let us go back to the data flow. So, this is our business data flow. This is our source table product. Next, we have a query transform. And since this is a full extraction, we are not considering any changed data part or an incremental loading. So, first we have taken there is no where clause and so in the query transform we have used the product ID, the uh, source natural key followed by the name of the product and the price coming from the source table. Next we have used a new output column called the date and we have mapped it with our global variable that is dollar $sysdate. So, it helps once you initialize it in the initialization script, it will not call the function again and again for each and every row occurring. So, that is the important uh, one of the important thing why we have declared the dollar sysdate global variable initially so that we can reduce the number of function calls to the sysdate. Next we have a query transform where we are looking up our target dimension table. So, we have used a new function call. Let us check the mod uh, modify function call to see what is the content so, over here we have used the product dimension, our final target table of SCD type 1 as our lookup table. So, we have compared the lookup <coughs> column that is the source product ID with the input product ID. And as an output, we will consider the product key available in the target dimension table. Also, take a note, note that we have used a preload cache as one of the cache specification of the lookup table. So, what it does whenever a product, new product comes in, it will check in the dimensional table, whether product dimension table, whether the particular product is existing or not based on the source natural key. If the product does not exist in the target dimension table, then we will insert that particular record in the dimension table. And also as a part of the lookup over here, we will get a return value of null for the product key because the product does not ex exist in the target dimension table. And let us consider if a product exists in the dimension table. So, as a part of the lookup, we will get the uh, product key that is the surrogate key of the di target dimension table as a return value. Next, we are using a query transform to determine the logic which records we will consider for insert and which records we will mark for update. So, this is a scenario what we have described earlier that this product key what is returned by the lookup function. If it is null, then it means the record does not exist in the target dimension table and we need to insert that table in the dimension table. So, for that we have used a flagging as a character INS insert and if it is not null, then the record is already existing in the target dimension table and we just need to update that particular record as a part of SCD type 1 implementation. So, we have flagged it or marked it as UPD that is update. Next, we will use a case transform to uh, route the 
rows correspondingly to the particular groups. So over here we have created two groups or label. One is the insert where the flag is INS and next is the update where the flag is update. And also in this particular case as you can clearly understand the loop can only be true for one case. Next after we have defined the case transform we have routed our rows insert and update accordingly. So let's check in the insert part. In the insert part we have used a query transform to do a pre formatting before sending it to the target table dimension table. So there is not much we are doing a one to one mapping over here. Next we are passing so you have checked over here that I have just changed the name as accordingly to product key so that it matches the target uh, table schema so I am matching with name doing a comparison based on name so I have just changed the uh, lookup underscore product key to product key and mapped it accordingly so in case of insert you can understand that this value will be null so next we are using a key generation transform to generate a surrogate key for our dimension table for that particular source record so over here we have selected the target table name that is the product dimension in our case and the key generated uh, generated key column or the surrogate key in this particular scenario is the product key and the incremental value is set as 1. Finally we have placed our target instance. Next we check in the update part over here in the update part we have uh, we need the product key because uh, it's a surrogate key that is being returned by the lookup transform and we will use it to update the existing uh, update the name and price fields so over here after that this record because all the records originating from the source is treated as normal and by default the normal is performed as an insert operation so we will use a map operator to transform or to change the operational code of the row so that we want because the, our purpose is to update this particular records coming through this transform. So we are using a map operation transform here for every normal row we want it to flag it the flag the operation code as update. Next we used our target instance. So based on the key column it will update the existing dimensional table attributes like name and price. So now check what property uh, one of the uh, options what if we have configured in our target instance. We have just increased the rows per commit interval to 10,000. Apart from that we have used a overflow file. So in case of any uh, rejection of uh, records while writing to the target we have used overflow file so and we have se selected the file format as write SQL. So whenever we select this format we, uh, we will get the whatever the insert or update uh, statement that has been generated and we will get it in our reject file. Next as a part of the catch block if there is any exceptions it occurs maybe the database access errors, database connection problem or execution errors in uh, data services job server any repository access of if the local repositories uh, local repository access errors all this will be handled by the catch block and as a part of the uh, error handling what we have used a script and we have just displayed this error message the error timestamp and it will appear at the session uh, at our job log Next we have raised an exception as job failed. Why we have raised this exception? Otherwise if since we are using a catch block although there is an exception it will be handled in the catch but the status of the job will show as completed. So in order we want the job status to also display as terminated. So that's why we have used the function call of raise exception. So finally what we have done if the uh, if the there is no exceptions or errors but if there is a database rejection so if suppose some records are getting rejected then this catch block will not be able to handle that so in that case what we have used is a overflow file now we want to ensure that the size of the reject file is zero if the size uh, size of the reject file that is any records got rejected while writing to the target table and the size of the file is greater than 0 then again also we will raise an exception 
that the job failed and check the reject file. This is one of the simplistic um, design of the framework and later in a stage where we have a separate article on designing a best practices ETL framework to handle the dimension tables as well as the fact tables. So this is very much about the product dimension implementing us a slowly changing dimension of type 1 and in this case we have considered a full extraction of the source table or you may consider is that a flat file coming on a daily basis. Thanks for watching this tutorial to know more please visit our website dwbiconcepts.com. Thank you.